What's going on today, guys? It's March 14th. Puck U is back at it. I'm Mike Burns from Why Lose Sports. I got less victory over there, our NHL handicapper, as always. It's Thursday. There are 12 games on the schedule. We're going to jump right into it. Les, what's going on today, brother? How you living? Living large. Almost as large as the criminals that have abducted the Yarmor Yager bobbleheads. I don't know if you saw that or not, but you know it's a problem with your organization when breaking news is a theft of Yarmor Yager bobblehead night in Steel City. Like, what the fuck? Is it maybe that has some sort of connected connection to the minus 330 that Pittsburgh has somehow earned against you know the lowly sharks, but that lowly? I don't know. I think I think Pittsburgh's the worst fucking team in the league right now. So hey, that's a real stupid number. It's it, yeah, and I'll you know, this could be a really interesting one. And not that I, I want to get I don't want to waste my time talking about this, but I saw that line and I was like, what the fuck? And then I saw the breaking news about the bobbleheads. I'm like, oh my God. They literally have nothing to talk about. <laughs> nothing to talk about. But anyways, last night. Burnsy, Jordan Binghamton. Wow. Banner, dude. What, fucking what a banner. fucking effort he put in. How was it's too bad he wasn't on a good team because if he was, that team would be just a force to be reckoned with. You know, uh, he stood on his head. Some of like three to redirections, and he's still making the save. He had an outstanding game, you know. Stacking the pads this side, flopping over yeah. that way, stacking them back the other way. Just disgusting. And then you got Mick Jesus coming in. I'm in with another Hattie. My God. No big deal. There is no way Edmonton doesn't go deep in these playoffs. You heard it here first, folks. If I had to make my playoff bracket right now, I have Edmonton going the distance. Think about it. Look at look at Crosby and Novechkin. How long did it take them to get their cup? Took them quite a few years of that team being built around those guys. Well, McDavid's been in Edmonton for like a while now. I don't even know. He's been... And Six, seven years, years, something like that. Yes, something like that. it's been a while. So is it, it's almost like it's time. It's almost time. So if the playoffs started today, Burnsy, I'd be all in on a futures bet for Edmonton to take it up. Canada's due. We're so due. We haven't won a cup since the Habs uh, in like 93. 92, 93 or whatever it was. So, uh, but yeah, pretty good. Pretty good night last night. Colorado, Vancouver. That was an exciting game. I didn't stay up for it, but I did watch the highlights. Uh, you know, kind of the game we expected, right? You know, kind of expected uh, Vancouver uh, to put in a good effort at home at Colorado, starting to figure things out at home. McDavid, obviously, you hit what? It, what was yours? Oh, dude, we we're just rolling out the Nate Dog three way parlay, man. Goal yeah. assist over one and a half. It's just fucking automatic. Five in a row. You got to start parlaying that with McJesus and Hyman. You 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 be quitting this job and just living on your own. In no Get out of my mom's basement. How much money you're gonna make off of McDavid and Hyman? But anyway, it's not uh, you know kind of a weird night for a couple games. Winnipeg gets beat at home by uh, you know Nashville, who really seems to be like a legit team now. Like they really, it's hard not to give them some credit. And we called it yesterday, Burns. That you can't trust the yeah, Winnipeg trust Jets. I said earlier yesterday. I feel like this is a bad spot for Hellebuck. I feel like he's going to get burnt a little bit tonight. And he did. I, you know, Some of the goals I thought were a little bit soft. But that's the problem with this Jets team is you can't rely on your goalie to shut out the other team every game and expect to win, especially in the playoffs. So Winnipeg has got to get they got to get more goals. It's I know it's, it sounds easier said than done, but they got to they got to be better. They got to be better. Well, I was hoping for that new guy bump. You know, into fully ETG didn't find it. Didn't they, they? Didn't find a lot of things last night. And but we what we did hand hand out yesterday was you know a little tip on Yossi and Forsberg. You know, both got points in that game. I mean, they're I mean Yossi has points fucking on almost every game. Yeah, he's been great. He's been great. And you know, Soros Juice. He's been I can you know he heard you call him average. Team. So you got you got to worry about like what's going to happen to this Nashville team once he starts to cool down a bit because we all saw what happened with uh, uh, you know some of these teams recently that got really good goaltending that would go on these great runs you know Seattle uh, even the Islanders you know they got great goaltending going a long run it's amazing what a goalie can do for the result of your team 
Well, I mean, I, I'm going to take that and just lead right into what we got, what we're looking at tonight. I mean, we're going to talk, you know, about the best matchup, you know, biggest, biggest game right off the jump. I mean, we're, we're going into Raleigh tonight with Florida and the Hurricanes. This is the third meeting of the season. Uh, Florida, little surprising to see at a, it's almost a pick game, but still plus 105, minus 126 for, for Carolina. Over under here set at five and a half. I mean, the Panthers own this head to head. So it's you either look at it like, oh, Carolina's finally due, or you just kind of trust the numbers and see where it all goes. But I mean, Florida has won seven, seven and three. They've won five in a row. Uh, they, the, before the Canes shut them out last, uh, was it two, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, which uh, Kachekov's amazing 45 save effort. Um, you know, I mean, we, we talked about the cats yesterday, man. I know they're, you know, Bob is the man. Bob is just un fucking believable. He's seven and one against the Canes all time. Nine, five, oh, one, six, eight goals against. I mean, the cats added depth scoring with Tarasenko. They got Ocpozo, but I mean, how do you fade what we called yesterday the best team in the fucking NHL? You don't. <laughs> They're plus a hundred. That we're talking about the Florida Panthers here. They they've been absolutely unbelievable, and the two games that they did lose was a one goal game, which easily could have went the other way. And one of them was to Carolina in Carolina, like you said, that one nothing shutout affair. Now, the one interesting thing is, is this morning I I pulled up, put up a, a free pick on this game at the under at six. Now it's down to five and a half. Mm. It's it, it has it moved. Often. But with that being said, if you still want to do this, you might actually you're gonna have to buy that extra goal. I think it's worth it. You know, uh Carolina at home goes under way more than they go over, especially against Florida. And same with Florida on the road, they they definitely like tighter games they just it's harder to play on the road so you can almost expect that but you look at the head to head last game in florida and carolina one nothing the game before that 2-1 3-2 four nothing 3-2 i mean this is over a span of a couple of years but th these aren't these aren't high scoring games in raleigh bernsey so even at five and a half i might like it less i would definitely consider trying to buy that extra goal and give up a little bit of juice, but have a little bit more security just in case, you know, these goalies can't be hot all the time. You know, Bobrovsky is going to have the off night, you know, Anderson just got back. He's had a few starts now, but this could be a little bit of a tougher task for him. Now he hasn't seen the Florida Panthers since he's been back. So it's, it's, it's going to be tough to say. I would definitely buy that goal to minus six, uh, yeah, less than six and a half. Well, that's that's the part that scares me on this game is Freddie Anderson coming back off of this injury. I mean, he's only played nine games all season and he's only got a couple of, you know, under his belt trying to get back to form here. I don't know if I can trust, you know, him holding off this Panthers attack. I understand that could off, you know, played out of his fucking mind, you know, earlier in February with a 45 effort save. I mean, I fully expect the cast to bring the same effort here. But you think Freddie can stand on his head for 45 saves or anywhere near that? No, no, I, I, I don't. And you look at it as the two games that he did play. He played against Montreal and he played against Calgary. Two wow. teams, not a lot of offense. Perfect for Freddie because he needed to get back in somehow. What better way than playing a team like Montreal and, and, and Calgary? But this is not Calgary. This is the Florida Panthers. So I'm a little bit concerned about him ruining that over that under bet at six and a half. But on the other hand is you, we could still win at five, one, if he does lay an egg, but Broski hasn't laid too many eggs this year. So you got to count on him. You got to count on him to, you know, give up one or two. I, I fully expect Florida to win this game because of that goalie matchup is just a little bit off kill. I mean, listen, you know, Carolina has been has been crying for years about finding a true goal scorer, and it's really been the biggest thing holding them back to make that next step. They did make some nice moves at the addition. You know, they got the prize of the deadline. They got Jake Gensel uh, away from Pittsburgh. Uh, they also added Kuznetsov, and he's a little bit of a fucking wild card, to say the least, man. Um, you know, he it's almost like he can play better than anybody only when he wants to. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see here him here, you know, on a winning team, you know, 
with a coach that doesn't take any fucking days off, that doesn't take any fucking shit, that will put his his boys through the grinder and rod the bod. So it, it's going to be interesting how this all works. I mean, it's either going to blow up in their face or this could just be fucking magic. You know what? I I I just can't see a repetition of last the last meeting. I don't see this being a one nothing game this time. You know, it's not very often that your goalie, unless you're Jordan Binnington and you have money on him, like last night, uh, to go in and stand on his head time and time again. Like you look at the shots against Carolina's given up in the last few games, 24, 20, 25, not a lot, but Florida averages well over 30. They're like 32, 35 shots a game. So that's like 13 more than what they're used to giving up. You got to expect a couple goals here. So, uh, you know, a, a plus 100, why not throw a little bit of change on that Florida money line? Listen, these teams are almost pretty much neck and neck. I mean, the Panthers are pretty like one or two spots above in pretty much every offensive category, pretty much every defensive category. So it's almost like these two juggernauts were built just to kill each other. And then we'll see if Carolina finds that, you know, extra scoring touch by bringing in Kuznetsov and bringing in Gensel. Uh, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, this is going to be a hell of a hell of a matchup to watch tonight. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to be flipping back, back and forth out of this one. All right. Now let's look over to Philadelphia. We got the Maple Leafs against the Flyers here. Uh, Toronto is the road favorites, at one, minus 125. Philly, the home dogs at plus 105, over under set at six on the nose here. I mean, this is a little bit of an interesting matchup here. Uh, the Leafs own the head to head, right? They won eight and two over the last 10. Uh, the over has actually cashed here seven times in these meetings. Uh, Leaves in the last 10, they're seven and three, putting up 3.3 goals a game. I've allowed 3.1. Uh, they've gotten a lot of a lot of starts out of uh, out of wall lately. Now Samsonov is going to get the nod here. He's had a lot of rest. He hasn't played since the 9th of March. Um, but in his last ten games, he's nine one with a two six six and a nine zero two. I don't know exactly what's going to be happening here with the Leafs coming in. I mean, there's no torts behind the bench after his fucking explosion the other day, which was fucking hilarious. Um, <laughs> how, do, how do you see the the, the Leafs walking into Philly tonight? I can see Austin Matthews showing up tonight. I know there's no Mitch Marner in the lineup, which is going to put a little bit more pressure on Matthews to be able to perform without his right hand right hand man. But Toronto has had obviously a lot of success against Philly recently. Matthews has a hat trick just almost a month ago to the day against this Philly team, and then in January he had two points against them. So he's he's gotten five points in two games against Philly. You see where I'm going with this, Bernsey? Mm -hmm. Yep, he likes these boys. Anytime goal, Austin Matthews. That's what I see tonight. I feel like he's gonna get get it done. He got quiet for a little bit, uh, and then but everybody's got to get quiet once in a while. You exactly. Know? Well, unless you're fucking McKinnon, that's yeah. just it doesn't happen. But I mean, he's still getting points. But he's gone a couple get couple uh, a couple streaks where he's gone a game or two without getting a point. Uh, you know, he's not shooting as much uh, lately. You know, his last couple games, he's only got three shots on net, uh, four shots against Buffalo. He got five and then four, four, two, four, six and four. So he's barely averaging four shots on net. And usually that Matthews line, and I, I haven't checked it, but it's usually four and a half. 14, 14 shots on goal average usually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he's, I don't know if he's maybe going through something right now or it's just, you know, He's worn out. I don't know. But the Leafs have a couple days off. He's had a lot of success against Philly. Uh, I really like that prop bet. And if you want to parlay him with, uh, let's say, Bertuzzi, anytime point, both of them, that, 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 that probably wouldn't be terrible, especially with no Marner on that power play. They're going to be looking for Bertuzzi to be smacking one in. Uh, Philly does have a good p penalty kill, but, uh, you know, that's a really, really good power play. I don't know what it's going to look like without a Mitch Marner, but if you're looking to, you know, dabbling into that, Matthews in in uh, Bertuzzi over points, get those together and see what it pays. I mean, there's still plenty of talent on that roster that if, if Marner goes down, it's not like they're sunk, not like they're totally fucked or anything like that. So you, you could be 100% right there. Now, I mean, 
we know the story in Philly, right? Like they had they they're holding on to the third spot in the Metro, right? But they haven't been playing fucking awesome. They've been playing 500 hockey lately, right? And they if they don't get things together, and I'm not saying that they have to get it together tonight, but if they don't get things together, they're going to be on the outside looking in. They got teams steamrolling up their back coming after them here. Uh they're 4 5 and 1 in their last 10. I mean, like I said, Torts isn't going to be behind the bench after blowing up after giving up uh, four goals on 15 shots against Tampa Bay two games ago. You know, that ended up 7 nothing. Uh Philly plays that tight style game. They don't put up a lot of points. They don't let up a lot of points. Uh, their power play is super fucking struggled. They're only like 13% in their last 10 games. And their penalty kill hasn't been too hot either, 76%. So if they they play a rough and tough style of game, they can find the way they can find their ways into the box early and often here. So I, I think I think you're right about that that leaps power play right there. They were minus three thirty against the Sharks the other night. And how did that go? It went to overtime, did it not? I think it was a three two win uh, for Philly. If it wasn't overtime, it might have been regulated. Either way, not something that you would expect to see. Even more well, it of a be a six two game. Yeah, you would think, but they're getting a lot more credit than they deserve. And luckily for them is, is the teams behind them are well behind them, but this is going to catch up to Philly because they got a couple games at hand on some of these teams that are chasing them down. So they could be slipping into a wild card spot tonight if, depending on how things go with the Islanders and... uh uh, caps. Well, caps are fucking done. Mm. That's they're they're done. But e- either way, there's there's there could be some hurdling going on after tonight. So it's, I'm excited to watch tonight. You you love seeing these these battles for wild card spots. You you love seeing teams like fucking get stressed out. Like oh man, we're out again. We gotta. What do we? You know when when do we hit panic mode and pull our goalie in overtime? You know, <laughs> did you know the rule on that? By yeah. the way. About the the point thing, I didn't no, know that. It, nobody knew it. Everybody found out about it, but nobody knew it. Well, yeah, I didn't know it. And I read that. I I heard that. And I was like, what? How I didn't know that? something about this. I know everything about fucking hockey in the NHL. What the fuck? I couldn't believe it. I mean, I'm not a ref by any means, and it doesn't happen that often. But I I did not know that. So it's kind of an interesting spot. So you know, you you got to wonder what these teams are going to do going forward. Like if Detroit ends up in a in a overtime kind of spot fighting for your life what do you do how do you decide that as a coach do you go off of just shootout stats like well we really suck in the shootout or you know what we're 55 percent. i'll take my chances you know i you know how do you decide that and you're either going to be a hero to zero in no time it's like going for it going for the two-pointer in football right it looks great when it works but you look fucking stupid when it doesn't so boy did he look stupid yeah, well. can't go it on fourth every time. Fuck that. We go for it every night, Bernsey. My man's. Mm-hmm. All right. The last game we're going to be talking about here. This is going to be a tight one here. We got the Rangers going into, into Tampa. Pretty much even money here is the pick them over under set at six and a half. I mean, the Rangers are going to be looking for the season sweep here. They've won the last two games. Head to head five and five. The under has come out nine times. Uh, the Rangers have been real strong the last 10, seven, two and one. Took down Carolina 1-0 in a real hard slugfest game last time out. Rangers don't have a shit ton of offense in their in their in the, in their bag. Uh, they only average 2.9 goals per game. Power play hasn't been great, but they can turn it on with Kreider just sitting in the front. You know, Mr. Tips a lot. They've been 18%. Um, but you know, they really haven't needed any offense lately, man. I mean, they've given up 1.6 goals per game in the last 10. Yeah. Right, their, their penalty kill, dude, has been ninety fucking percent. Oh my god! And who do you always say who's your best penalty killer? Hmm, the goalie, Mister Shisterkin. Has he returned to fucking form, dude? Oh my god! I called him out. He obviously they translated it for him so he could understand what I was saying, <laughs> and he, he's totally waking up. And I like him. I think he's phenomenal goalie. He's fun to watch. Um, <clears throat> he's a streaky goalie. But mm-hmm. not as of late, right? And the the city of New York is in all world of hurt because they just got news that Garrett Cole is going to miss the, the first two months of the baseball season. So he's making up for the slack to rest the 
the minds of the New York fans out there. And he's, he's done an amazing job. Like there, there's no doubt about it. He's been great. I mean, New York is doing a really good job of limiting high scoring opportunities against them. So that's, that's really helpful when you're getting a lot of low caliber shots to uh, obviously make those saves. Like you look at Binghamton last night and those weren't low quality opportunities. Those no, were, were tic-tac-toe not. plays, you know, redirections, hard saves to make. And Quick has had, to, or not Quick, Shesterkin has had to make those saves, but not as much lately because of how tight that defensive core has been playing. Now, one thing to keep in note is, are the New York Rangers overvalued right now because of how good their goaltending is? Because we just we just saw it with the Islanders. Islanders got hot, not because they're that good, but because they got good goaltending. Mm-hmm. Is this one of those scenarios with New York where they're maybe not as good as they think they are, but they happen to have a really good goalie, like similar to a Winnipeg kind of situation? I don't really know. But what I do know is what's obviously in front of us. And what's in front of us is is... Tampa hasn't been very good. You know, okay, sure, they shut out Philly in that shit show of a game. Uh, but rather than that, Bassey, he's uh he hasn't been himself. No, he hasn't, he hasn't been himself for the last little while. I, he's struggled at home even more. So you got one of the top teams in the East going against a team that's fighting for their life. You know, I, I don't know how you can fade fade uh New York in the spot. And the under, you said yours was at at six and a half because mine's only showing at six. I wonder if that's changed. Yeah, yeah mine's, showing, mine's showing six, which is kind of expected given how tight these games uh, are played between these two teams. One really interesting stat, and you know, out of the last eight games that these guys played, one team, one or the other, only scored one goal seven out of eight of those times. So the the score is three one five one two one three one two one three one four one. Somebody just can't score when these two teams play. I don't know who's who it's going to be. I feel like it's going to be New York tonight because of how well they've been playing. You know, they went on that long run, lost a couple, kind of choked up a bit, played some good teams, lost against those. But the under, mm, mm, I like it. it. Smells good. Like Listen, th- th- this Tampa team, it's not your granddaddy's lightning here. You know, they're they're four, five, and one their last 10, and, and they've lost through some bad teams. You know, I mean, Calgary, Buffalo, Washington, Ottawa. I know some of those teams went on a little bit of a heater there, but still, th- this is supposed to be the Tampa Bay Lightning, right? Um, you know, and also, too, I mean, the Lightning's a little bit of a tough stretch here. You know, this is a veteran team. They're playing their third game in four nights, fourth game in six nights. You know, now they got to try to put the puck past Gesterkin, you know, deal with the heavy Rangers and the play Rangers play a heavy game. Um, they did make some additions. You know, they got Matt Dumba on the back end. Uh, Anthony Duclair is in the lineup. He's playing with Stamkos and Sorelli. He got a goal in that 7 nothing Flyers explosion. But you're right, dude. Like, it's just not, it's not Vazzy. It's not, it's not Vazzy. And I give New York even more of an edge because of how, little shots Tampa Bay is getting. They're used to peppering goalies, 30 Mm -hmm. 30 plus shots, 35, 32 shots. Their last five games, 26, 22, 29, 23, 22, 27, and 21. They haven't gotten more than 30 shots, Burnsy, since February 22nd. That's not Tampa. That's not this. That's not the Tampa Bay team. Uh, They're, not giving up a ton of shots either, but they've had subpar goaltending. So you can't get, you can't consistently give or get, get under 30 shots with poor goaltending because it's just not going to work unless you have an amazing goalie. It's just not going to work and it's not working for them. They got to find ways to create more offense. And, you know, Kucherov has done a, you know, he's had an amazing year, but he's kind of alone. In a lot of ways, like Stammer, he's kind of, you know, winding down in his career. We kind of seen lower production from him uh, compared to some of the other years uh, at his peak. So, you know, this this could be, you know, kind of like a Pittsburgh scenario where it's getting close to the end of that era where these big dogs are starting to get tired. Just I, I mean, it happens, away. dude. It happens. It it's you normal. Know? 
they did. They had a good run. They won a couple cups with the, with this group or most of these guys on the group. Like that doesn't last forever. Look at Chicago. You know, they went look at Pittsburgh, you know, those, those are all teams that do that. And then what goes up comes down just like my stock portfolio. And <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Listen, like you said, Cooch has been amazing. He's got two goals, 12 assists in the last 10. Uh, Braden Point, you can definitely look for him for an ATG. I mean, he's been a goal machine, seven goals, four assists, his last 10. I mean, they still have magic 100%. Can they win this game? Absolutely. They fucking can win this game. But it is not going to be fucking easy. You know, I mean, we talk about streaky teams. I mean, you know, the Rangers streak could stop tonight. Sturgeon could light up six. It could happen. But we're it's in the not, It's not happening in Bernsey. New York has taken this one. They've only won two games at home in like the last month. You know, one of those was against my lowly Canadien. So uh, it, it's just not happening. New York is just too good of a team. Shesterkin is just too good right now. He, this is, this is going to be a, a 4 1 win for New York. All right. Well, you heard my alarm. My clothes are dry. I got to get them out of the dryer. We're going to get going over here. Make sure you guys get over to whylose.com. We got a deal going on tonight. $99 gets you a week. And what happens, brother? Tell them. Okay, so last night we did the same thing. 99 bucks Guaranteed parlay. Otherwise, the season, uh, season's free. We're doing the same thing tonight, but we're going to make it even more challenging, Bernsey. 4-0. We got to be 4-0 tonight. Otherwise, you get the season absolutely free. Playoffs, no everything. It's, it's a no-brainer. It's a win-win. You either win with us on the card or you win with us to to play for the rest of the season for free. So 99 bucks gets you in on that. Uh, make sure we get these in before 6.30, guys. We got to get time to process these things on back end. It takes a little bit of time. I had a couple people message me at like 7.02. Hey, I just paid. Can I get the package? She was like, well, man, I don't know if it's going to work like that. Make sure you get in early is all I'm saying. Get in early. Get the card. They will be emailed out to you. And then uh, we'll go from there. We'll see how things go tonight. All right, guys, stay connected with us over here on Telegram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, X, Instagram, especially. I'm Mike Burns. That's Less Victory. We'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Enjoy the games tonight.